Good afternoon. My name is Joanna Housen, and I am student council president for the 2019 to 2020 school year. I'm also a captain of the state champion cheerleading team and the Lightroom editor for the yearbook. Welcome to the 98th BHS commencement ceremony. I would like to begin by welcoming Superintendent Dr. Kimberly Peach Miller, Principal Ms. Chris Kristen Robbins, Assistant Principal Mr. Craig McMillan, as well as Board of Education members Victoria Powers, Alicia Mitchell, John Barno, Board Vice President Michelle Minio, and Board President Marley Snowden. Another special welcome to friends, family, alumni, community members, teachers, and fellow members of the class of 2020. Before we begin, there are some big thank yous to extend. I'd like to thank the boosters for con putting congratulatory signs in the yards of all senior athletes. I'd like to thank the BEF's Alumni Relation Program for placing congratulatory signs in the yards of all seniors and for giving us a spiffy free alumni t-shirt and a high flying frisbee. I'd like to thank the PTO, senior parents, and the Stoltz Mead Global Advertising Agency for lining Main Street with senior banners. On behalf of the class of 2020, we are so grateful. Finally, I'd like to thank Principal Robbins and Mr. McMillan for organizing the best graduation ceremony we could possibly have in these unique times. Now, please join me in welcoming our lovely superintendent, Dr. Kimberly Miller. Thank you, Joanna. I would like to begin by thanking those of you who are serving in healthcare or other essential roles during this difficult time. We appreciate that you are going to work and facing risk while many of us are able to work remotely. Also, on this Memorial Day weekend, it is appropriate that we take time to remember and thank those men and women who have given their lives in service to our country. I would also like to recognize others who serve and willingly rush into harm's way that we might be safe and free. If you are an active duty military member, veteran, or first responder, thank you for your service. I would also like to recognize the following graduates as they will begin their service to our nation as part of their next step. Ethan Bowman will serve in the United States Marine Corps. Ella Hayden will attend the United States Naval Academy. Helena Rain Wilson will attend the United States Coast Guard Academy and Micah Rubenstein will serve in the Air National Guard. You are among less than 1% of Americans who raise your hand and serve in the armed forces. You and your families are willing to make sacrifices to protect and defend our nation, and we are grateful. Finally, I would like to thank Ms. Kristen Robbins, Mr. Craig McMillan, Mr. Tyler Trill, Mr. Mike Nolan, high school staff, and our maintenance and custodial teams for their work over two long days to provide each graduate with their special time to receive their diploma and then create this virtual ceremony. As always, you have put students at the center of your decision making, and I thank you. Class of 2020, you have been writing your story since you were born. And like every class before you, and every class that will follow you, your story is uniquely your own. Your story has highlights that no one else will understand and tragedies that you experienced as only you could. Your story includes the COVID-19 pandemic that impacted our nation just months before you were to graduate from high school. And it has provided you with an opportunity to really think about how you face life's challenges because how you face difficulties will impact the rest of your story. It is not uncommon for graduation speeches to focus on the accomplishments of the graduates. Graduation speeches highlight the good that you will do in the world, the goals you will reach, the contributions that you will make, and with good reason. Each year, our graduates go on to begin journeys that lead to successes for themselves, our nation, and even the global community. But before you can impact others, you must have a mindset that you can impact others and the world around you. 
You must believe that you have the power within you to make a positive difference. A significant part of developing that mindset is consciously making a decision about who and what you will be in the face of uncertainty, obstacles, and even crisis. You will face them. Difficulty is part of life and no one is exempt. But you have two choices in how you manage those struggles and write them into your story. You can be a victim or you can be a victor. As we celebrate the class of 2020, we are doing so in a manner that we do not prefer and would not have chosen. But we are faced with a health crisis that has created a call for us to be contributors to the common good. Over the past few months, we have seen countless examples of people who have taken the more difficult path of serving, sacrificing, and providing to others. From healthcare workers who, to those who ensure we have food on our tables, from COVID survivors donating their plasma to those who are running errands for neighbors. We have had a front row seat to the victors, to those who take risks and sacrifice their own comfort for others. Unfortunately, we have also seen less attractive traits. We have encountered those who behave as if the coronavirus was done to them, that they have unfairly had something taken from them. Graduates, take time to pause in this moment, in this environment, to decide how you will face this and the future challenges that will come your way. You can rise to meet a challenge, or you can sink to despair because it happened. Success, contribution, and accomplishment do not come to those who never face difficulty. Success comes to those who face difficulty, look it squarely in the face, and say, I can overcome this challenge. I am not a victim of circumstance. I am a victor. Class of 2020, you will still be writing your story after you leave. And while you don't always get to decide what is next, you do get to decide how you will face it. I hope that you will choose to face the future believing in yourself and your power to be victorious. If you do, your story will be a masterpiece. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome Joanna Housen back to the stage. Thank you, Dr. Miller. It is with great, great pleasure that I get to introduce our first student speaker, Jordan Herman. Jordan has really taken advantage of his time here at Bexley. He is an avid member of the robotics team and the bowling team. He spends his extra time working at JCC and Kroger. He loved his computer science class with Mr. Cubbins, where he found a passion for technology and engineering. I have no doubt in my mind that Jordan will thrive at the University of Cincinnati with a major in computer engineering. Please join me in welcoming Jordan Herman. Thank you, Joanna. Good afternoon, Bexley High School class of 2020. We made it. Ms. Robbins, Bexley teachers and staff, parents and families, and most importantly, Bexley High School class of 2020, I am honored to be here with you today, and I am thankful that Bexley City Schools has provided us with this virtual graduation ceremony. Since the beginning of our senior year, I had thought about delivering a commencement speech at our graduation. I imagined a speech that would be filled with humor, stories of our shared experiences, complete with an inspirational message. In light of the impact COVID-19 has had on our lives, my speech instead is about lessons learned, appreciation, and hope for the future. Before COVID-19, I took many things for granted, including hanging out with friends, seeing grocery stores filled with toilet paper and paper towels, and meeting with teachers in person for extra help. Up until March 10th, I had a pretty typical schedule for a high school senior. I woke up, got ready for school, dreaded sitting through lectures and doing homework, looked forward to eating with lunch with fr my friends and participating in extracurricular activities. However, life abruptly changed on March 11th. I woke up with a sore throat and was unable to attend school. I later learned that we needed to clear out all of our personal belongings, including our books, due to the uncertainty of school reopening immediately after spring break. I must admit, the notion of an extended spring break excited me until I learned what this would really mean. Everything that had always been normal, going to school, going out to eat, going to parties, even getting a haircut was no longer an option. Words like social distancing, masks, washing hands every 15 minutes, testing, pandemic, and distant learning very quickly became our new language. 
It, it was amazing how quickly an extended spring break turned into distant learning for a few weeks, and ultimately for the remainder of the school year. I never imagined that I would complete my Bex education at my kitchen table. I also never imagined how much I would miss lectures, homework, and seeing my teachers and friends every day. While COVID-19 has been a scary and difficult time, it has also taught me to value every moment like it is my last. I have learned to value the people around me, and I have learned to value my education. Looking back, I have one major regret. I regret not appreciating my teachers and saying thank you when we had in-person classes. Our teachers educated us, shared knowledge from their past experiences, provided guidance on study skills, helped us to learn how to problem solve and think about the world around us, and provided advice for our futures. As we have adapted to learning virtually, I have come to recognize that Bexley High School has engaged, equipped, and empowered us for the future. On behalf of the class of 2020, we want to thank our teachers for working hard to ensure we continued our education during our final weeks of Bexley High School. I cannot imagine this was an easy task, and the kindness and support provided will never be forgotten. The people who have always been and will always be there for us, the ones who get us out of bed each day, teach us right from wrong, lecture us when we stay out too late, take our phones and video games when we have done something wrong, support us through good and difficult times, provide for and love us. Our tutors and our academic teachers and so much more deserve a debt of thanks from us. Our parents and families have done so much to help us get to this day. While COVID-19 has forced us to physically distance ourselves, I am so happy that we've been given the opportunity to spend meaningful time with our parents and families before we go off into this world. COVID-19 has helped me to appreciate the incredible friendships I have made through Bexley High School. I took for granted hanging out with friends, going to Starbucks, graders, movies, and never imagined how much I would miss our daily interactions. While texting and Snapchatting has always been our way of communicating and Xbox has always been fun to play, I now find that these are platforms that we help us to spend time together as we are required to be socially distant. I believe we have learned the important lesson of staying connected as we go our separate ways to college, military, or the workforce. I am confident that we will strive to remain close friends. When I came to Bexley in sixth grade, my plan was to try and fit in and lay low, do what I needed to do to get through the day and work hard. As I move from Bexley to college, I feel prepared and ready. I am inspired to apply what I have learned and look forward to making a difference. While the end of our high school experience was not what we had planned, I believe we have learned to value our relationships, become more resilient, and we will work to make the world a better place. I want to thank our school administrators, staff, and students who fought for this day. As I conclude this speech, I want to impart one thing. Appreciate what you have before it turns into what you had. Congratulations, graduates. From multivariable calculus to AP Physics 2 to book club to the cello to ultimate frisbee, our next speaker is outstanding, intelligent, involved, and a friend of mine. I now welcome Julia Dryling up to the podium. Thank you, Jordan. It's funny, when I think about our class, my class, the class of 2020, I don't think of quarantine or our last moments in school. I think of the people I walked these halls with. Because you see, the thing is, our class is full of brilliant people. And yes, you might think I'm exaggerating because after all, this is a graduation speech and we're supposed to glorify our time at Bexley in our high school years. I certainly have incentive to. But seriously, that's what I think of. I was sitting at game night with Maya Rothschild and Fiona Hayes when the fir thought first came to me. In fact, it startled me so much that I simply blurted it out. I genuinely can't think of anyone in our class who isn't a good person. And the more I've thought about it since then, the more true I've realized it is. Our class is full of a lot of different people with different friends, different hobbies, different goals. We have our sporty types, our artistic types. We have our politicians and our mathematicians. We have our rebels and our popular kids. But the one thing we all are is decent human beings. There's no template for being a good human being, just like there's no template for the perfect friend or the perfect parent, but somehow, at the end of all this mess we call school, we turned out okay. And yes, I know good and decent are all subjective. It's all defined in light of something else, something we call bad or evil, which again is up to interpretation. But in light of all we've gone through, all we've lived through, I think I can confidently say that these people graduating today, these are good people. I've seen it in the smiles in the hallways, the cheerful hellos in the morning, even when half of us were still asleep. I've seen it in the hugs my classmates have unquestioningly volunteered for anyone who needed it. 
I've seen it in the laughters and the cheers at football games and band concerts. I've seen it in the cheerful notes my classmates leave for their friends in their lockers. I've seen it in a shared sandwich here, a cup of tea there. I've even seen it in these times of distance and sickness. Friends and classmates alike, looking out for one another. I've seen their passions, their ups, their downs, their heartbreak, their joys, and the one thing that shines through it all is that every single one of us at the end of the day is doing our best. And I think that's all adults can hope for us as we leave the confines of our Bexley bubble and enter the terrifying and exciting real world. That at the end of the day, we walk away just a little bit better. We might not know where to put commas in a sentence or have aced every test, but the fact that alone that we ended up where we are today is a testament to our strength of character and our determination to live our life on our own terms. I'm so proud to have grown up with you all, and I'm even more grateful to get to graduate with you. So here's to living life as best as we can, stumbling through it all with as much love and kindness as we can muster. Because after all of this, I think our world really just needs some decent human beings. And now I'd like to call back to the stage my dear friend and fellow Euro scholar, student council president, Joanna Housen, to introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you, Julia. Our keynote speaker for the 2020 Bexley High School commencement is Mr. Dan Carroll. Dan Carroll is the co-founder of Clever, an education technology platform used by more than half of the US K through 12 schools, including Bexley's middle and elementary schools. The Clever single sign-on portal helps over 15 million students and teachers spend more time learning and less time logging in. Prior to Clever, Mr. Carroll joined Teach for America and taught science at Strive Preparatory Schools in Denver until a passion for education technology led him to become their Director of Data and Technology. He has a BA in Human Evolutionary Biology and Computer Science from Harvard, where he graduated magna cum laude, worked on Harvard Crimson newspaper, and was elected to the Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society. He's also a proud 2005 graduate of BHS, where he played football, chaired student council, was co-editor of The Torch, and co-captain of the In the Know team. Mr. Carroll lives in San Francisco with his wife and six-month-old daughter, and has recently taking, taken up perfecting the art of the dad joke. Please join me in welcoming our 2020 Bexley High School commencement speaker, Dan Carroll. Hello, class of 2020, and congratulations. I feel so lucky to be able to share in this incredible moment with you. I wanna start out today by appreciating all the incredible Bexley educators who have helped us get to where we are today. Specifically, I'd like to thank Joanne Lemieux, who passed away this past year. In her ninth grade English class, I, helped us, I discovered my voice. And I wanna thank the most important Bexley teacher in my life, my mom, Susan Morantz, who's retiring this year from back to Maryland after 44 years in the classroom. She's been an incredible role model and inspiration for me and so many others. Graduating seniors, this is your day. And I wanna tell you, you've made it and you should be proud. I remember being in your position 15 years ago as the class of 2005. It's full of excitement, but I was also a ball of nerves. I was thrilled to see the culmination of all the studying, homework, practices, classes, and exams. But I was also worried about what the future would hold. What would the world beyond Bexley High School be like? And although this is a question that Bexley graduates ask themselves each and every year, this year, as we all know, is very different. Graduating in the midst of a global pandemic is truly an unprecedented experience. Today, I'm here to tell you graduates, you've got this. Your time at Bexley has left you prepared to thrive and excel no matter what the world throws at you. In fact, not only are you prepared, but you're actually lucky. I'd go so far as to bet that 15 years from now, when you're riding on your 4th of July reunion float, in the year 2035, you'll look back at how lucky you were to have graduated exactly when you did. Although it might be hard to see this now, being in the class of 2020 has already made you stronger and given you more opportunities than any other Bexley graduating classes have before. While it's so easy to talk about what COVID-19 has taken from us, and it has taken a lot, I wanna use my time to, with you to talk about the gifts that it is giving. The first one I want, thing I wanna talk about is that COVID-19 has given you strength and confidence you never knew you had. Normally, it's possible to graduate from Bexley High School without having faced so much adversity. And that's because Bexley is an amazing place to grow up. It's safe, beautiful, 
and home to great schools and rich traditions. And these are all great privileges, and we should be very grateful for that. But of all the things that Bexley has that makes it safe and comfortable, it also, those things also have a downside. Looking back, I appreciate how small and safe Bexley is, but I realize it didn't always prepare me and my classmates for a world that can be big and full of risks. Growing up in Bexley sometimes felt like playing bumper bowling. Anytime I started to head for a gutter, I got a gentle nudge right back on track. But the thing about bumper bowling is it'll never teach you to make how to be a great bowler. All that cushy padding doesn't actually teach you how to keep the ball out of the gutter. So life inside the Bexley bubble was great, but I don't know if it fully prepared me and my fellow classmates for the world outside. This year, the Bexley bubble popped in early March for all of us as schools closed and fear washed over our country. Over the past few months, I'm sure we've all had moments where this pandemic has gotten us down. But I read something recently to help me understand how the great the adversity we're going through can ultimately become our greatest teacher. It was an interview with an admiral in the Vietnam War named Jim Stockdale. Admiral Stockdale was captured and held as prisoner of war in Hanoi for seven years. He was at the mercy of his captures, of his captors, and he was tortured. Many of his fellow prisoners never made it out. And when asked how he survived, Admiral Stockdale said something that has really stuck with me. Well, you have to understand it was never depressing because despite all those circumstances, I never ever wavered in my absolute faith that not only would I prevail and get out of this, but I would also prevail by turning it into the defining event of my life that would make me a stronger and better person. Not only that, you realize I'm the lucky one because I know the answer to how I would do and you never will. We don't know what we're capable of until we're tested. And once we're on the other side of a challenge, we have a knowledge of ourselves and a confidence in our capabilities that's, come, that's earned only through real struggle. And even before COVID, some of you may have faced more than your share of adversity and struggles to make it to graduation today. You may have built that confidence and strength from the adversity you've already faced. And you know, like I know, that, that those times of challenge are the times that define you as a person, that give you the confidence to take on whatever the world throws at you. For me, when I think about who I am, I think about the hardest moments I've been through, getting diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was a junior at Bexley and having to grapple with a chronic illness, going, becoming a first year teacher and having to lead a class of eighth graders to academic knowledge through all sorts of challenges, and starting a company and working 120 hours a week when absolutely nobody believed we could make anything happen. Those moments, those moments of challenge and struggle, of sleeplessness and nervousness, those moments are the moments that define me and the moments that make me know that whatever the world throws at me, I can handle it. And you, this challenge of COVID-19 is a, a moment that, of adversity that will make you stronger and give you the confidence to take on the world outside of Bexley. So graduates, as you face the challenge and uncertainty of this year, I encourage you to continue to meet adversity head on as it will leave you stronger, more resilient, and more creative than you ever were before. So with this strength and knowledge that you can do anything, what will you do with it? COVID-19 has given you a world open and eager to receive your ideas and your leadership. So many classes of graduating seniors head off into a world full of energy and ready to make an impact and find it hard to see where they fit. Let's take Bexley for example. Bexley is full of wonderful traditions and institutions. Johnson's ice cream, Rubino's pizza, the Labor Day block party, and the 4th of July parade. Your principal Robbins was my assistant principal. The Bexley of 1964 that Bob Green writes about feels just like the one that you and I grew up in. And in this world full of rich and wonderful traditions, what problems need to be solved? Where can you fit in? Where should you put your energy? Well, as you have seen class of 2020, we are no longer able to just enjoy our traditions. Together, we've had to rethink what school means. We are reinventing graduation right now. And some of our creative solutions will, will persist well beyond the stay-at-home orders. Some of your ideas may become the traditions that the class of 2050 follows. This need for new thinking and ideas isn't just limited to Bexley. In college, I studied evolutionary biology, and I've been thinking about one of the key theories in that field all the time lately. As scientists who studied the fossil records, they began to realize that evolution wasn't a constant process. Species didn't adapt and change at a continual rate. Rather, fossils show long stretches of time with minimal change, interrupted by short explosions of evolution, where some species go extinct, others change greatly, and new species are formed. This theory is that change comes in waves, called punctuated equilibrium. And I think it applies not just to dinosaurs, 
but also to the world we live in today. It's typical for graduation speakers to tell you to carpe diem, seize the day, and go off and make the world a better place. And while that is great advice, the reality is the world usually resists change. The equilibrium does not want to be punctured. The world is busy. The world is satisfied with how things currently work. The world tells new graduates to wait their turn, to earn their stripes, to wait until they have degrees and experience to try to make a change. When I graduated from college in 2009, this inertia frustrated me immensely. Like many of my classmates graduating into the Great Recession, we were forced to search for missions when we graduated college, not corporate careers. I found a mission in education because I believe every student deserved that kind of Every student deserves the kind of education experience I received in high school. This challenge that you are graduating into is going to give you a purpose and allow you to find a mission far, far deeper and richer than one that you might have found in a normal graduating year. I'm so excited to see how it shapes your studies and your direction. But even with a mission, you might find a system unwilling to change. And that's what I found in the education system. I saw such immense potential for technology to make teachers' lives easier and to make learning more engaging but I faced a school system that was skeptical of any technology beyond the copy machine. When I experimented in my middle school science classroom, my students' eyes lit up when they ran physics simulations and created websites. Uh, and that experience of lighting my students up with new technology led me to a technology leadership role in the charter school network that I taught in. But in that leadership role, I became even more frustrated. I was operating in a world where there was no time for new ideas when it was considered okay to waste a quarter of a class period just trying to log into a laptop, and where it took months for new students to get set up with email accounts. Those frustrations with how the world existed led me to create Clever with two of my friends to make it easy for schools, teachers, and students to try new education technology. And while Clever in many ways has been successful over the eight years we've been operating, we haven't achieved any fraction of the big vision we have for how schools could really benefit from using technology. The, change has been, the changes we've made have been slow and hard fought. And then COVID-19 hit. Schools closed and the education system that was so unwilling to change was forced to adapt. All of a sudden, schools were moving and changing faster than even than we were. And education technology has made more progress in the past, past few months than it's made in the past decade, because we had to. Seniors, the world is hungry for change. Across the globe, all of our equilibriums have been punctured. And this is an incredible opportunity for you, the class of 2020. The world you are heading into will not tell you to wait your turn. The world needs you to find us new and better ways of living. We need your ideas. We need your voices. We need your votes. We need your startups. Those of us who have gotten used to the world as it is, we need your help to imagine the world the way it should be. Class of 2020, graduates, you are one of a kind. You have been challenged like no graduating class has. You are stronger, more mature, closer knit, more resilient, and more creative. And just in time, because you are entering a world full of problems to solve, a world that needs your leadership. You are ready to reinvent Bexley and reinvent the world. I can't wait to live in the world you create. Congratulations and good luck. Hey guys, it's Josh Radner, Bexley High School class of 1992. Um, I am here to congratulate the class of 2020. Um, amazing job. Graduating high school is, uh, it's a big deal. Hi, Bexley High School. I'm R.L. Stein. I write the Goosebumps books. I just wanted to say congratulations on your graduation. Hi, I'm Bobby Carpenter, and I want to congratulate the 2020 graduating seniors from Bexley High School. I know this has been a trying time, and it's not the graduation that you had all envisioned, but make no mistake, this time will prepare you for future success down the road. Congratulations. Hey, Bexley class of 2020, this is Zach Klingenberg. And I'm Nate Klingenberg, and we just wanted to congratulate you on this amazing achievement that you guys have worked so hard for for the last 12 years. Hey, it's Cardell Jones. Just want to say congrats and big shout out to the class of 2020 um, at Bexley High School. Hi, everybody. Jungle Jack Hanna here. 2020 has definitely thrown new challenges our way, but adversity makes us stronger in the end. I know you're going to do great things and wish you the best of luck. Hi, class of 2020. Man, I know this is not the end of the school year you wanted or the graduation you wanted, but I hope you'll be able to use this somewhat dark time to build a future that's brighter for yourself, for your family, for our whole world. Congratulations. Bexley High's graduating class of 2020. 
I'm a buddy of Drew's. I just wanted to come by and say congratulations to you all. What an incredible day. It's an amazing accomplishment. You all should be so proud. Hey everyone, this is Coach Holtman with Buckeye Basketball. I want to send a big congratulations to the 2020 Bexley High School graduating class. Wish you health, happiness, and great success in your future. Hello, this is Ray Lewis, and I want to say a personal congratulations to the Bexley class of 2020. God bless you all. Thank you, Dan Carroll, for that inspiring message. In times like these, it is so nice to see the positive side of the story, as well as how the class of 2020 is stronger due to these difficult times. On behalf of the class of 2020, we are sending Mr. Carroll and his family, including baby Juna, high-valued high school spirit wear and a gift card to Jenny's ice cream. I would now like to introduce the Bexley High School Choir Director, Amy Blosser, and the Vocal Ensemble. Miss Blosser will lead the Vocal Ensemble in The Road Home by Stephen Paulus and the alma mater. The words can be found on the back of your program. <laughs>
join me in welcoming Principal Miss Robbins for the presentation of diplomas. Dylan Gabriel Abel, Diploma of Honors. Sydney Cassidy Altman. Sophie Ariel Avalon. Joseph Beck. Avery Noel Beatler. Rose Blank, Diploma of Honors. Derek Stephen Orkel. Rose Bounds. Ethan Park Bowman. Stephen Brenner, Diploma with Honors. Noah 
Robert Bridge. Jake Newton Griffin. Charles David Brett. Zachary Harrison Brooks, Diploma with Honors. Donna Candace Brown. Miles Andrew Bryant. Audra Elizabeth Boudros. Bumper, Diploma of Honors. Marley M.C. Burnett. Ethan David Kane, Diploma of Honors. Julian Scott Kitsu, Diploma with Honors. Andrew Charles Sheehan, Diploma with Honors. Maya Eliana Cohen. Maria Christine Polis. Marie Coles, Diploma of Honors. Yay! Christopher Ford Cowan, Diploma of Honors. Aaron Jacob Cox. Damian Carl Davis. Yes, baby. Daniel Max Davis.
William Steele, Diploma of Honors. Grayson Victoria Fendi. Christopher Dixon. Julia Marie Chen Dryling, Diploma of Honors. Joni Marie Dunker, Diploma of Honors. Harrison Lee Dubler. Lauren Rose Ehrlich. Hey, Lauren! <laughs> Josiah Xavier Bucheche Ejayase. Abigail Rosa Elizondo. Diploma of Honors. Maude Doyle Epstein. Ilsa Marie Evans, Diploma with Honors. Miles Levison, Finding Out. Jonathan William Feldman, Diploma with Honors. Ethan Robert Fosna. Madeline Riley Foster. Yay! Woo! Peyton Michael Foster. Alexandra Aislinn Fowler. Elise Marie Fox. Yay! 
Maxwell Henry Gardner. Jonathan Tarek Delight. Nakeen Elise Giller, Diploma of Honors. Megan Elizabeth Goldstein. Ava Claire Pemberton Grossman, Diploma with Honors. Fiona Ray Cox Haynes, Diploma of Honors. Freya Celestine Cox Haynes. Naya Jacay Harris. <laughs> Catherine Lynn Hall, Diploma with Honors. Ella Jade Martins Hayden, Diploma with Honors. Virginia Hayes, Diploma with Honors. Claire Marie Hyland.
Jordan Gregory Herman. Zachary Lawrence Herman. Yay, Zachary! Elena Marie Hanky, Diploma of Honors. Avon Nicole Horton Coots, Diploma with Honors. <laughs> Joanna Rose Housen, Diploma with Honors. Benjamin Ives, Diploma of Honors. Kennedy Grace Jacobs. Johnson, Diploma of Honors. <laughs> Madeline Joyce Johnson, Diploma of Honors. Rosa Grace Wynn Jones, Diploma of Honors. Miles Vincent Joseph, Diploma of Honors. Quinn Madison Kane. Hoffman, Diploma of Honors. Dylan Maxwell Hoffman, Diploma of Honors.
Nicole Marie Langford, Diploma with Honors. Jaciana Charvet Larson. Audrey Marie Flowerhouse, Diploma of Honors. Justin Andrew LaBelle. Ellie Miriam Lee, Diploma with Honors. Jacob Brian Lucas. Front of the table. Go ahead, come around. Abigail Anna Luber. Graham Aiden. Lions. Fainan Albert Madison. Perfect. That was the best walk yet. We're gonna face that. Grace Alessandro Madison. Ella 
Love Louise Meeks Diploma with Honors. Andrea Alyssa Meyer.
Micah Gershon Rubenstein. Olivia K. Rutherford. Juliet Connors Ryan, Diploma with Honors.
Kieran Kearns Welch. It is my absolute pleasure to be here today and offer a few brief closing remarks to everyone here at the 98th commencement exercise for Bexley High School. You are here today because you have met the graduation requirements as set forth by the Bexley City Schools Board of Education. And today, May 24th, is your day. Before we go further, I want to thank as many people who have worked tirelessly to make this unique day happen. Let me begin by recognizing the talents and efforts of an extraordinary faculty and staff. They are dedicated professionals who work incredibly hard to help each student reach their potential as learners, citizens, and leaders. They have put in long hours and have the highest of standards not only for their students, but for themselves as well. To say that our staff has the ability to educate in a scholarly, flexible, compassionate, distant way is an understatement. Bexley High School consistently remains one of the top high schools in the country because of the people that work in our school and live in our community. I would normally ask that if you're in the audience today and attended Bexley to please stand at this time. I still would like to recognize this honored tradition because Bexley is such an amazing place to live and learn and this tradition extends from generation to generation as so many come back. With this theme in mind, the excellent tradition of Bexley, throughout my remarks to May, today, I've included alumni messages which the Bexley Education Foundation was so kind to solicit and I will share for this special class. One of these from Mabel Friedman, class of 1962, who shared these remarks in her 1993 speech to the graduating class. It's now time to get out of Bexley, leave. Go out and learn about a world that is not like Bexley. Go out and experience cultures that you do not find in Bexley. Go out and get to know people who did not grow up in Bexley. Leave the comforts that have made Bexley so special for you. Your Bexley education has prepared you to do this, leave. But know that someday you're welcome to come back and to bring your new knowledge with you. 
With this in mind, thank you to our teachers for your service and commitment to our students, preparing them for these next steps. Students, as you remember the knowledge and wisdom these educators have shared with you, I want you to also remember the service and labor they provided you. Because service and hard work are attributes and values I know you will take with you as you leave Bexley High School. Benjamin Zox, President Bexley High School Class of 55 and proud grandfather of Will Feldman, graduating class of 2020, wondered, what can a person 65 years your senior possibly say that would be relevant at 18? The best I can come up with is this. Don't underestimate the value of your Bexley education. If you took it seriously, you can compete with your counterparts from the finest public and private schools in the country and even the world. So I have the courage to pursue your goals with passion and you will likely do well. At the same time, please devote quality time doing good by helping others. Regarding the virtual ceremonies, pray for the infected and the brave first responders who are taking care of them. And on the lighter side, it will be a nice icebreaker at those reunions you'll be attending in coming years. Now the, to the people who made it possible for us to create this ceremony. First, I'd like to acknowledge my fellow administrator, Craig McMillan, our administrative assistant, Brenda Ferguson, and our counselors, Stephanie Krasnowski, David Leland, and Carrie Washburn. I'd like to thank Brett Santantonio, Bobby Moore, and their maintenance staff who went above and beyond in the setup for our very special ceremony. A very special thank you today to senior class advisor Mike Nolan and his commitment to our graduates as he commemorates this class through photos. And also Mr. Tyler Trill, our public information officer who committed hours to the creation of this virtual ceremony. I would like to acknowledge and thank the superintendent of schools, Dr. Kim Miller, Bexley City Schools Board of Education members, President Marley Snowden, John Barno, Michelle Minio, Alicia Mitchell, and Victoria Powers for their continued support of our work at Bexley High School. And lastly, I'd like to thank the Bexley Education Foundation for their continued generous support of our work at Bexley High School and your special outreach to alumni during this challenging time. And finally, to our commencement speaker, Mr. Dan Carroll, class of 2005, thank you for the message you shared with us today. Your generosity and thoughtfulness is greatly appreciated, especially during this unprecedented time. Thank you for challenging this class to imagine the world as it should be, not as it is, for assuring these graduates that they have this and should have confidence in their strength and abilities. They are just in time and should meet adversity head on. As J.D. Salinger said in his novel, The Catcher in the Rye, I was trying to feel some kind of goodbye. I mean, I've left schools and places. I didn't even know I was leaving them. I hate that. I don't care if it's a sad goodbye or a bad goodbye, but when I leave a place, I like to know I'm leaving it. If you don't, you feel even worse. I don't believe any of us knew on March 12th we were leaving Buxley High School to finish the year from distance without a true goodbye, but that is exactly what happened. And as Mr. Joshua J. Elias, class of 75, reminds us, it is a difficult to write history and live history simultaneously. Yet, as you graduate, from my perspective, these are defi definitively historic times. You'll hear things such as, this is now yours to shape, yours to solve, and resolve the problems that you might think the rest of the world have created. It is time for you as graduates to not point the finger, but rather to bring your collective and individual A-game. While not blinking an eye, you'll be listening to your heart, seeing with your mind, honing your intuition, with an entirely new backdrop. The new politic will be through actions taken to reawaken two key qualities, humanity and empathy. This will lead to creativity and innovation that will re-energize your environment. A metamorphosis will ensue within your community, your city, and your planet. Your vision will be relying on a keen eye that is focused upon a long view of what is best your judgment to be defined by your actions and your inactions, whether they be seemingly tiny, kind acts or vast movements of decisions that change people's lives. Yes, the world is laying a lot on you, and the lot has been chosen for you all at 18 years old. It's remarkable in a time where world is set in a reset mode. Tradition of graduation, I'm certain, has been marred, but the tradition of quality 
is yours to uphold. Class of 2020, our most sincere wish for each of you is you to embrace all the new opportunities awaiting you, just as you've already done in the last two and a half months. Do not shy away from new challenges and change. All the while, all the while appreciate and celebrate your uniqueness. No one can take this away. You are our future, and I could not be prouder of you. It has been my honor and privilege to serve as your principal. Now comes the moment you've been waiting for, the turning of the tassel. This gesture symbolizes the transition from a secondary student to a high school graduate. Seniors, as my final request of you, I ask that at this time to please stand, and you may now move your tassel. Dr. Miller, members of the Board of Education, staff, parents, and guests, I am proud to introduce to you the Bexley High School graduation class of 2020.